Okay, we've got a 45-15 set up here for this one. 45 seconds of work, 15 rest, and you do each station two times in a row. So if you're doing push-ups, push-ups for 45, rest for 15, push-ups again for 45, then we'll move to the next station and go through lunch. Um, equipment that you'll want, some sliders. There'll be some hamstring runners here. So if you have sliders available, that'll be good. Um, a mini band and then some different weights. There's a few different things they want weights for. So if you've got light, medium, heavy weights, or objects, or if you just have one thing, that's fine. But whatever you have for that. So first one is going to be a pillar push-up. We're gonna start in 10 seconds. So it'll be in a plank position, going up to push-up, then back down to plank. A lot All right, here we go. In that nice tight plank position, push your one hand, raise the body, lower the body. At some point, you're gonna to wanna to switch lead arms here. If you do the entire first set on one side, fantastic. Just make sure you switch arms on the second set. Being 45, 15, we're on for 45, off for 15, and then the same exercise a second time. So make sure you take your rest period in the middle. 15 seconds out. Ten. Three. Two. That's good. One down, one to go. This could also be done from your knees if you wanted to. Or needed to, I suppose. Five seconds. Same thing here. Up, up, down, down. Nice wide base and feet and try to control the hips the best you can so they're not moving all over the place. We're gonna go through 19 exercises and then we'll have a couple stretching things afterwards. 25 seconds. The next exercise is gonna be in out squat jumps. We're not using a band for that. 15 seconds. Ten. Two. Good. We'll go in out squat jumps next. Five. So a little light on the feet. When you're in that wide stance, you're sitting back into a nice squat, butt going backwards. When you're in the narrow position, it's just a quick tap. You get the arms into a little rhythm, however you want. But soft landing shouldn't be making much noise, not much impact on the floor, 18 seconds to go. So back into the same thing, start with the feet tight and then sit back like this, a little out, in, out. The contact toe is initiated with the toes, but when you sit into the squat, the heels will come down. When you do that middle touch, you can just stay up on your toes. Like getting heart rate up a bit, legs getting burned out here. 20 seconds to go. Our next one is going to be down on the floor on your back for a suitcase crunch. Eight seconds. Demo, heavy, heavy, heavy crunch position. 
as you move that torso side to side, hopefully using the obliques to do so. If it's too much for your neck, feel free to support your head a little bit. Are you still really working on those obliques? Try to be as intentional as you can here. If you just float through the movement, you won't feel much. Really think about getting that big side crunch position. It should be kind of hard. Five. Press that low back down, lift the chest to ceiling, pull that rib cage down to the hip. You might even think about kind of swiveling the, the hip toward the rib cage as well. 15 seconds out, we're gonna go to a single leg RDL with a curl and overhead press. So some perhaps medium weights, I would say light to medium, because you have to overhead press. Two. Or if you just have one object, you can just hold it with both hands, bring it up overhead, sitting the butt back. A lot of balance on that transition into the press. And as you go back, keep that back leg straight. And you drive up at the top. Fifteen seconds to go. those weights for that weight just go straight down pretty much towards your toes towards your foot there so you're not reaching forward or far with it five seconds good 15 off you're going to switch to the other side and challenge yourself try to get through a perfect set no tipping over no using that other foot distributed on that down foot too. So you're not all in the heels, you're spreading it out a little bit there. 15 to go. Next one you'll be putting the weights down. We're going to be doing alternated forward lunges. Or actually if you want to hold some weight for these you could. We're gonna be putting our weights down. Yeah. <laughs> So if you want to hold some weight either at your side or on the front, you're welcome to do that. But we're just going to be stepping back and forth here. So we mostly do reverse lunges. This is forward. And hopefully a nice fluid movement as that front knee touches. Kind of keep that same speed down. Don't let your knee hit the floor, but you're definitely getting a lot of depth in that front knee. Drive back to that leg to return. 20 seconds out. The single leg RDL should have been a lot of backside, a lot of glutes and hams. This here should be a lot of quads. 10. I might get some glutes and hamstrings too, but it should be quad dominant. Three, two. that a little bit of weight can go along 
long way. So if you have five, 10 pounds here, it should be pretty awesome. Especially if you maintain the tempo. Five seconds out. Hopefully you're not using your hands on that front knee to push yourself back up through the arms. 15 seconds. Next thing is going to be a plank with a reach. We'll go into a normal plank position. Nice wide feet, reaching the arm out front. Five. toes or on your knees and then reaching forward. The goal is to not let those hips shift around a lot, not let them rotate. If it feels easy and you have no rotation at all, bring your feet a little closer together, but even one or two inches is going to make it a lot more challenging. Looking straight down at the floor. Got 17 seconds to go. Keep a nice straight line down your body. Six. Take a deep breath, in between. Enjoy the floor. Get up close and personal. Freshly cleaned and nice. Yeah. All right, back up. Just smooth tempo. Should be a lot of movement in the body, just the arm reaching, everything else locked in. You can maybe feel it a lot of different places. You can probably feel your hips and your legs a little bit too. 15 to go. Next one is going to be a slow bicycle. So you'll be on your back, you can stay down on the floor. Cueing the bicycle to be a little slower paced for a while now, so this time it's actually written as a slow bicycle, so really take some speed off. And if you've been doing a slower bicycle, fantastic. Slow it down even a little more. If you've yet to try it, give it a go. Nice slow, maybe every three to five seconds you get one elbow to knee. <clears throat> and the further out those legs are as they bypass each other, the harder it will be. So Keeping one leg kind of extended, push it around, draw the torso across the body. 10 seconds out, full extension is good. Keep it low, back down five, two, there you go. We have three ab things in a row. We'll go from plank and reach, to slow bicycles to side plank drops. A little bit of core, but a little bit different. Not as bad as the crunches bicycles be up that series. Oh, that's fucking That's the series. That was yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it to you tomorrow or next week. <laughs> and I'll just <laughs> go ahead and pass that right along. <laughs> 25 seconds out, guys. If you need to, you can keep the knee a little softer. You can tap the heel on the floor tighter to glutes just to limit some of it weight and space out there. 10 seconds. And as I mentioned, side plank hip drops will be our next thing. Five. So you're 
on that elbow and shoulder, and then hips lower and down, either touching the floor or just above the floor. You're not actually gonna sit your weight down. And then as you lift up, thinking about squeeze into those obliques on the bottom side, so crunching down on that bottom side. Ribs pulling down towards your hip. 15 to go. Six. So good, you're on that other side. As always in the side plank, you do want to be aware of what your shoulder and elbow are doing there. Make sure it feels okay, feels stable. And then the hips lower and the hips raising. That top hand can be on the hip. It can be lifted up toward the ceiling. It could be down on the floor if you need some extra assistance there. 10 seconds. Now you're going to stay down on the floor. We're going to have some slow push-ups as our next station. Two, one. <laughs> If there's a speed you're comfortable with, don't use that speed. Find a different speed, a little faster or a little slower. And a big increase in effort here would be not pausing for a long time at the top of the push-up. So you'll drop in slow, press slow, and then more of a continuous rep that is drastically harder. 10 seconds out. Five. Two. Same thing here, nice slow, both directions. Ben's got a good demo. For those of you who sometimes have some neck issues, make sure the shoulders stay down, away from the ears. A little bit of lat tension would do you good. Just be aware of that. 25 seconds here. Perhaps an easy inhale on the way down. Depending on your speed, you might need a couple breaths. But an inhale down, press and exhale. 10 seconds out, we're going into hamstring runners next. Five. Two. On your back, heels on the discs. Hopefully butt up in the air, we'll see. Most challenging would be keeping the hips up high the whole time, getting full range of motion, and having those feet cross each other as far away from your body as you can to, to make it the most challenging. Make it a little easier, you can let the hips rest on the floor, but really driving a lot of weight down into the sliders. So keeping the tension on the hamstrings. Another option would be to go to the bridge position, just reach one, back up, and the other, back up, just alternating there. Six seconds left. So 
again, all the focus is on the back side, even the calf, hamstring, and glutes. The more weight you push down into the floor with your feet, the more challenging you're gonna make it. So even if the hips are on the floor, you don't wanna be putting a lot of weight down into the hips. 18 to go. Next one is going to be a hand walk and push up. Splicing the parts if we need to for mine. Part one, part two, something. 15 seconds out here. Yeah, I'll play it. Next thing, guys, we're gonna need a band. We're gonna go band squat pulses. Ooh, my hands are gonna look come. So hand above the knees. feeling too if you're getting too much pressure in the low back keep it shallower with the depth don't go quite as far down but the whole time you're pushing the knees away staying pretty balanced on the feet so you don't need to be all in the heel you definitely don't want to be putting a lot up into the toes Tension on the band, that's the whole idea behind that. That puts a little more into your hips, into your glutes. It's okay to have the knees come forward a little bit, but think more about butt sitting back. Ten seconds left, and then you're gonna keep the band on after this. You're gonna be in that abduction, that single leg position. I'll show you in just a minute. Love it. So you balance on one foot back here. Your position may be similar to that single leg RDL. 
the end point of it or close to it, but really focus on pushing the knees apart. Keep the foot that's off the ground, keep that leg nice and long. It should be long from heel to head. Glute is very active. You can do what you want with your arms. If you're super stable, find something to give yourself a little more instability. Pause the video, grab a towel, anything you have, an ab mat works well too, but stand on top of it, 10 seconds out. Five. sides. Same thing on the side. We have a good view here. Nice long body. All the way from the heel to the head. Glutes tight. That knee you're stabilizing. That leg you're stabilizing on. That knee has a little bit of bend to it. Should feel a lot of stability coming from that down leg's hamstring. The hamstring's pretty tight in that RDL position. 25 seconds out. Ten. Next exercise, we're gonna go into a push-up with a pulse at the bottom. Three, two. So again, good depth, and then we got this is like a half rep coming up at the bottom. Adds more tension down there. Go from your toes or from your knees. Make these harder. You can go off of one foot if you wanted to. You can spend more time in that pulse. Think slow motion at the bottom and then a little quicker from the top because that top would be a more of a resting position. Eight seconds left. on what the core is doing. Got 20 seconds left. The next station is going to be on your back. We're going to, going to be doing a static dead bug. Core's tight, backs down, kick the limbs, rib cage drawn down. When you think it's drawn down, pull it down a little more. And then just hang out. If you want to add some weight in the hands or in between the feet, you should be able to get into positions pretty aggressive where you might not need that though. 15 seconds out. 10. Two. Two. Five. If 
you're close to being on the floor with hands and feet and you want a little more, just make sure you pull those hips under, almost like we're doing a hip flexor stretch. So activate the core a little more, make sure that back's flat. Pull the hips through, should give you a little more tension. 20 seconds out. Might mean your feet come off the ground a little more, but that's okay. In 15 seconds, we have split squat jumps. Oh man, thanks for taking it. Oh, well, you have you have something afterwards. It's not bad. Do you see it already? No. It's fast feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a split squat. Take that still on my side. My legs are my legs are fresh, bro. <laughs> fresh off the feet are well. Probably the one thing you did. We've done so many split squats in the last couple months. You did a lot more than I did. So getting low. If these ever feel easy. If you get low to the floor on each one and then get a good jump up off the ground, there's no way these are going to feel easy. I don't care who you are. If they're feeling too challenging, keep it a little shallower or stick to reverse lunges where you're just doing quick steps backwards and then back up, switching feet as you go. 15 to go. Last 10. Nice, good set for five. Good first set. Oh, yeah. Got one more there. 15 seconds is enough time for the pain to keep going. Yeah, be better off just going to the same thing. You want to be real soft on the landing too, should be a lot of noise. If you are worrying a lot about noise, either be better, or you can do those quick reverse lunges. Also getting the heart rate up a lot. 20 to go. Yes, yeah. you don't get you. When you're doing them as well as high, that is this one we do. 10 seconds to go. And then our next one is going to be fast feet. I'll say you do it as well as going with fast feet. <coughs> if you still got a ton of energy, keep doing those split jumps in between. Good job, Ben. Lots of tempo, guys. Your legs are a little probably wobbly. It's good. It's a good challenge here. So you're gonna move fast again. 25 seconds out. Some people like to sink arms in a slow cadence. Some people like just legs. It's up to you. 10 seconds out. Ben's holding out on us. He got like a super speed. Five. Two. Two exercises left after this if you're keeping track. One core and one push up. 25 seconds here. Last 10 burnout. Last 10 burnout. 15 seconds. five on four and I thought you were going to stop on me. I know, I was <laughs> five, three, no stop it, no stop it. Marching plank guys, oh, plank man. position. Yeah, that was good, how many feel with those? That was operation worse, dude. That's pretty good. 
So push it through the toe. That helps give you a little leverage forward. When you go backwards, it's more of a push through the shoulder to help get you moving that direction. Maintain the plank. Not getting the butt way up, not dropping down. 15 seconds. Four. All right, good. So yeah, a lot of shoulders on this one. And then obviously core, since you're keeping the plank. And it's that opposite hand and foot movement, just like the crawl would be. And breathing on this one too. Twenty seconds left. We've got our last station, which is going to be a push up with a shoulder touch. Last five, couple more steps. Okay, 90 seconds of work left. We'll get in some stretching. Push up the shoulder and the shoulder. Sit. Toes if you can. Knees if you must. Hips are stable as we reach across the body. And as you reduce from two hands to one hand, just make sure you keep control of the shoulders on the floor. That stabilizes the arm. Keep that shoulder tight. Don't let it drift. 15 seconds out. 10, 3, Start with two, three, four reps from your toes and have to drop down the knees, that's fine. Do a couple. Try to anticipate that load in the hips and the core before you remove the hand from the floor. So brace and reach. 20 seconds out. Our first stretch, when we finish the push-ups, we're gonna go right into it after a 15 second breather. We'll start with an immediately hip flexor stretch. Done in five. Good, you've got 15 seconds to get into a kneeling hip flexor stretch. Normal cues, roll the hips under, squeeze the glute, maybe a little bit of weight through that front hand into the knee. And if you want more, do a little hamstring activation on the front leg, pulling the heel back on the floor. Feels a little tighter than the other side. 
check your hips, make sure the hips are pulled under, the glutes are nice and tight. or as light as it is appropriate. Work on your breathing, try to get the heart rate back down. Not that you guys are breathing hard or anything. I'm almost back down to threshold. <laughs> 10 seconds. Last stretch, we're going to cat cow. In five. Ben's already started. 45 seconds. We'll do this a single time, guys, and that'll be it for the day. Some more if you'd like. Hydrate a bit. Get a good meal in. Bye.